Hello, Richard from BudgetGuitars.com. Bit of a different video today, which I know I say often. If you're new to the channel and you're wondering what the heck this channel is and what's going on, my name is Richard McElmail, and I run the website BudgetGuitars.com. During the pandemic, I decided to expand the website into the YouTube channel. And the reason is simple, I am a musicaholic, and so I am basically with most of my free thoughts thinking about music. So I play guitar, play keyboard, sing, play bass, record and produce music, and I also do gigs. And so this YouTube channel is meant to be sort of like anything and anything having to do with music, usually guitar centric. So I have a few days off from work and I'm trying to decide what to do with my time. On one hand, one, you ever notice nobody goes like one? It's like when you count to five, one, two, three, four, five, but it, it's weird because nobody goes one. They go one, two, three, four, five. So I guess the thumb would be five. So I wouldn't want to go five, I would one. Anyway, one, I've got, 12 songs of which I'm going to pick the best 10 and that's going to be my next album. I've got the basic tracks done and I've got a few vocals done, but I got to do a lot more vocals before I can release this thing. Then I have to mix it, etc. But I'm also itching to get back out there and do gigs again. The pandemic killed all of my gigs. And so I really want to get back out there. So with the YouTube channel, what do, what do I focus on? You know, I mean, last week I made a video about tone pots with puppets, which is sort of where my mind goes. You know, when I think tone pot, I think puppet. All right, maybe not. I'm drinking a lot of water because I'm going to record vocals tonight. The older you get, the more important it is to keep hydrated. People think, well, let me drink some water right before I sing. It doesn't work that way. Your body needs to be hydrated because your vocal cords need to be hydrated and you can't directly dump water on your vocal cords and call that hydration. No, you have to drink a lot of water. It gets into your system and then your vocal cords will, will, uh, get hydrated. Anyway, I'm be drinking a lot of water today. Then of course I'm 56 and I'm on blood pressure meds. So that'll make me pee the water back out. So it's a constant battle. It's a war and it's a war. I'm going to win. I'm never going to win the war. I'm never going to, stop the war. I'm never going to win the world, but I am going to keep drinking water. So anyway, I'm trying to decide, do I shelf the album and just start building up my, my live sets again, you know, so that I can get back out there and do gigs right away? Or do I finish the album? And really I need to finish the album. Now, most musical, I'll put it in air quotes, artists would work on an album, finish an album, put the album out, and then go do shows to support the album. In this day and age, unless you're Taylor Swift, you're not going to make any money releasing music, not any real money. So I'm going to put my album out there. It's not going to make hardly any money in order to support my habit, all the musical instruments and stuff. In order to support all of this, I have to make money with music. And so Basically, I do the website, I do the YouTube channel, and I do the live gigs. All because, one, I love music and all those things are fun. But two, they all make money and they all help me buy more gear. And I like the gear. I just do. So I've decided that I'm going to set up the vocal booth today and I'm going to record some vocals tonight and I'm going to mix them. So this video is basically just me telling you all this. Now I'm going to do like a, uh, I'm going to record the entire process of setting up the vocal booth, but then I'm going to speed up the footage so you can see the, this homemade disaster thing that I do. The biggest problem with trying to record this footage is that I'm in a small room. I'm in a bedroom and I can't get the camera back far enough so that you can see the whole entire vocal booth because it's about eight feet tall. Anyway, here's some sped up footage of me setting up the vocal booth.
There's the frame. Now I'm gonna hang the uh, drapes and put the top on. So one thing that I do is I'm using packing blankets, but I got these space bags. And basically they're for storing clothes. But since I put these in the garage and I don't want them to get kind of like wrecked by the garage, I will, I'll put them and seal the bag up our airtight and use a regular vacuum to uh, remove all the air. So they take up half as much room and uh, it keeps them in really good shape. So when I'm done, I do the reverse. I put them back in the bag, seal it up, suck out the air, and uh, it's not too bad. I mean, this stack right here, which isn't very big as you can see, this is the whole vocal booth. The green thing here, I used to use this for green screen before I got a good one. This is just green fabric. It's not part of the vocal booth, but I don't know where else to store it. So anyway, I made a video on how to build one of these things. If you decide to build your own vocal booth, I would recommend that you don't build the exact thing that I built because mine's a little wobbly. I don't care that it's a little wobbly because it's just me using it. If I wanted to like actually go out and charge people to record them, I'd probably buy a pro portable vocal booth and use that instead of this contraption because this would be embarrassing. But uh, as long as I'm the only one who ever sees it, and uses it, it's fine. So it was just me and all of the people who watch my YouTube channel. Yeah, so my secret is safe. So to hang these guys, I've got these shower curtains that basically they hook through the little circle like this. They go over the PVC pipe and then hook through the circle. Again, I've got a video that shows this more in depth. This is just I'm just generating content today. And then to fasten the roof to the walls, I got some of these plastic clamps and I got these from Target actually. But you can get them at Walmart, you can get them anywhere. Doubles as a hand strengthening exercise. This song is called Time Won't Wait, and I already recorded a vocal for it, but I'm not happy with the vocal. I want to sing it again. And, and the reason is, I think that I'm the kind of guy, especially at my age, I need to sing for like an hour before I'm warmed up and I've got really good control. You know, somebody like uh, a Beyonce can like roll out of bed first thing in the morning, stick a mic in front of her, and she's spot on. I'm like... You know, I can't sing first thing in the morning. Late afternoon is as soon as I can sing. And I have to warm up like really, really well for like an hour before I sing. Otherwise, my pitch is going to go all over the place. And my, my vibrato is going to suck. So so anyway, that's why I would end up with a, with a bad vocal. And uh, I'll just give you an example. As, as embarrassing as this is, I'm going to show you why I want to re-sing this. So I'm going to start the song out. It's like the 80s synth pop sound. Guitar in there, it's not loud enough. That whole section through there I'm singing flat, which means I was probably tired. So I've got compression on this and reverb on this, but if you listen to it, you can hear how flat I'm singing. Let me just show you. And you're harder on yourself than anyone. Hear that? Anyone. Endless replays of the stupid things that you've done. Right. It's it's not it's not a bad vocal sound, it's kind of my my vocals but that whole entire phrase is just a little flat because i was too tired 
So I'm going to re-record this whole track. So one of the things that I do, if you've got these guys, if you've got the AKG K240s or any similar headphone that kind of artificially enhance the bass, that's going to be a problem when you put down vocals. And so one of the things that I do is here on this, the master stereo out, blow this up so you can see it better. I've got it disengaged right now, but I will do this. So basically I'm carving out a huge amount of bass frequencies. And this just means I'm not going to have all the boom in my ears. So that's one of the most important things. And then the other thing that I will do is when I'm singing through Apollo solo, one of the cool things about the Apollo units is they give you this software and you can go in and do presets. So I actually have a preset for the Rode NT1A, which is my microphone. So I just pull that up and it's telling me, asking me about phantom power, which yeah, I'll need phantom power. Basically the dialogue said, you don't have anything connected, but do you really want phantom power? Yes, I do. Anyway, so I've got, um, I've got a special preamp in here that I'm using. And you can tell it's good because it's got the, the fake wood grain. That means it sounds good. And then I'm also running through the uh, this compressor, which is an LA2 leveling compressor. So what I'm hearing in the headphones is I'm hearing this high quality preamp going into this compressor. And then I'm also hearing this real the real verb pro which is the uh ua reverb unit which you can set it to sound however you want so i'm hearing compression and reverb in the headphones when i'm singing but the apollo will only pass just the dry signal to the daw and the reason for that is you never want to record reverb because if you have to do an edit then all that echo is going to edit and it's going to sound like the Phil Collins drum sound only on your vocals. You might want that, but you probably won't. If you're not familiar with Logic, Logic is the best DAW for songwriters. I'm pretty convinced. It's not the best DAW if you're in a recording studio and you're recording like full drums and full instruments and the whole band live all at the same time. Pro Tools has got some really good options for that. But if you're one person recording alone, it's really hard to beat Logic, and track stacks is one of the reasons why. So here's what happens. You set up a loop, and in this case it'll be the verse, and you sing the verse over and over. It just automatically keeps looping back through, you keep singing, and it creates, here's take one, two, three, four, five. And then what you can do is you can go in here, and you can, autom you can choose like which parts of which take you want to use, and it will automatically apply crossfades. So what that means is if you've got like a couple of words from this take, a couple of words from this take, Logic will automatically, where the splice is, very quickly fade one out and fade the other in at the same time, so it's seamless. You couldn't do that in the old analog tape days. But in this case, you'll never hear the change. You'll never hear a click or a pop or anything. So. This is the fastest way ever to record vocals. It's really, really cool. And you can just keep singing and it'll just keep doing this. So my plan will be to record the verse and do as many takes as I need to to get it right. Then I'll move under the bridge as many takes as I need to to get it right. And just keep doing it that way. I don't have to create like five or six separate tracks to do my, my vocal takes. I just need to create one and then uh, then I'll be good to go. And I'll probably be singing it tonight. So this video is basically how I set up for a, a vocal recording session. If you're into home recording, you might have found this interesting. If not, you might or might not have found this interesting. Anyway, that's what I'm doing today. So that's what I made a video of today. Next week, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. But whatever I do, I'll bring you along with me. And I will see you again next Friday at 5.